everybody to Twisted Pear. I'm Graybeard. And I am Fine Ash Red. And hey. our special guest is me, Philip Fullman from the Cigar Lounge. Welcome, Philip. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, thanks. I, thanks for inviting me. I, I am ashamed to say I have not been out to the cigar lounge yet, and I have been meaning to and meaning to and meaning to. But man, getting away is is has been hard as of late. That's you know that's why we came up with the house sticks and the house cutters and all of that because then you can have the cigar lounge experience at your house. You don't even have to leave. It's like you're right there with us. Everything's branded. But uh, I think you're probably you're kind of far away from us because we're way up. We're we're north in uh, McKinney, um, and I know we're quite a ways from Ash, but uh, I, yeah, I, we're kind of like bedroom community. I, I'm in I'm in Euless, and yeah. I've, I've got some friends up there. And in fact, um, uh, the cigar traveler uh, Zach, one of our uh, partners, or not one of our partners, but one of our our team here, who mm -hmm. does a lot of the video work for us, uh, he's up there in your area. Okay. You know, uh, Paul Costa with Oliva says Euless is the uh, Beverly Hills of the Metroplex. So you know, I, I must be I must be living in the ghetto part of the Beverly Hills. <laughs> no, my, my was, is pretty nice. <laughs> there was just a New York Times article. He ranked Euless as I think one of the top places to live in the country. <laughs> so there's that. You're not going to argue with the New York Times. <laughs> You know, who, who, who can other than, you know, 90% of, you know, the, the population. <laughs> this is true. All right. So uh, welcome to the Twisted Pair. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm sure uh, Red has, has told you all about what we are about. But, uh, we are primarily everything about uh, cigar pairing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to kick this off and just talk a little bit about what or actually announce what I'm pairing. So I am going to be pairing the Alma Forte, the six sixty. Nice. With a barrel pick that another group I'm part of, which is the Holy Smokes, then they did a barrel pick with Acton Oak Distillery out of Colorado Springs. So this is my pairing. Here it is. So I am smoking um, y'all's cigar that I got because I actually went to this event and it is the Cigar Lounge Bono right there. And it's like, you, there can you go. barely see it because of my background. There, yay, there it is. Oh and um, I'm going to let you go more because I know that Noel Rojas did y'all's house blend. And one thing that I will brag about, and we talked about this when I went to the event, was a lot of house blended cigars, house cigars from cigar lounges do not have a band or they're not wrapped in cellophane. Right. And so I'll go to different lounges and I'll pick up cigars, but I don't know where they came from because if they don't have cellophane, I can't write on it. Or mm -hmm. um, I, it just goes somewhere and I completely forget what it is. So that was one thing that I was super excited that y'all actually had a band and you had cellophane. So <laughs> that made my day for that. I wish I could take credit for the cello, but I can't. Mm -hmm. But the band, that was, uh, that was a group effort that we were able to put together. So we were excited about it. We liked the band. It kind of mirrors a little bit of the, the, uh, the new logo that we have um, or that we implemented a couple of years ago so we tried to carry that over to it but uh yeah we're excited it's done well for us and uh it was great to have uh, to partner with noel on that because yeah. it just uh, noel's a great guy anyway mm -hmm. but yeah. the man knows his tobacco mm -hmm. um i am really excited um i think ash you've uh, you've got a, a chance to to try what he has coming out later this year. Um, I know I have, uh, and it is fantastic. I, my guess is it's gonna be somebody's cigar of the year. It's, it's oh, yeah. that good. And uh, so being able to partner with Noel was great for us. 
And right. uh, we, uh, we asked for something that was going to be medium body because we wanted to appeal to the most amount of customers, the most amount of smokers. But at the same time, we also know that some guys, they don't want a light smoke. They want to be able to taste it. So that's the great thing with the binder and filler he used. Um, you're going to get that f- full flavor, but not necessarily mm-hmm. that full body. And it's kind of like a little tasting experience for the customer because mm-hmm. you always hear how much difference the wrapper makes in a cigar, how much that changes it. So now you have three cigars with the same binder and filler, three completely different wrappers. So now somebody can try the Connecticut, the Habano, and the Maduro, see the difference and understand exactly what change that that wrapper is bringing to that cigar. And- when you told me that, that was like, I loved it because I don't think I've ever have been to a lounge where they kept the binders and fillers the same, but just changed the wrapper. And, you know, when we're educating people and we're talking about cigars, we talk about the importance that wrappers play on uh, the cigars and the binders and fillers. So like, I, I love that they're able to actually get to have that experience um and see how that is so um you know i thought that was really cool that y'all did that and i am going to be pairing it with um the statement purpose and i don't see that's the bad thing is i'm a delay so i can't see if y'all can see that so um yay okay so this is the statement of purpose it is by um martin house brewing company it's in fort worth so it's not far from us and it is a peanut butter golden stout. Um, I've and I've had a couple of these, and they've actually um, have grown a lot on me this uh, this summer because it's great. It's not that heavy, heavy stout. It's still in the lighter range of um, of a. Of, I know that sounds weird as as a stout, but um, it's not too too heavy but it's full of flavor. And usually whenever you have a lighter stout, it's not as full as flavor as what you would have with the darker creamy stout like I normally have from like wood. So um, that's what I'm pairing with tonight. That's what I'm starting off with. (laughs) Nice. All right, your turn. I have got the Luciano, where the hell did the camera go? Oh, there it is. Man, it's like being in a mirror. Uh, the Luciano Dreamer. This is, I, I forget the size they gave it. They didn't call it. it it's probably a little bigger than a Corona size, but um, I just love the flavor off of this. I'm a big fan of Sumatra wrappers anyway. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm, uh, I've really been enjoying this. So I have got the Luciano Dreamer along with a cup of coffee because... <laughs> I uh, I predominantly drink coffee. I've got the uh, San Pellegrino because you've got to hydrate and uh, it's like water, but a little fun. So since I'm <laughs> limited to coffee, I try to at least make the water experience a little fun. Well, you know, you, you can't, you can never go wrong with coffee. You know, it's, um, I tell people, cause they asked me when I started drinking it, I was actually five and that's, that's a God's honest truth. My mom used it as uh, Ritalin for me Mm -hmm. she figured it would have the same effect so um yeah the two big loves of my life cigars and coffee which they're great loves they are indeed yeah never had any issues (laughs) so um what one of the things that you know that we talked about was um because you manage y'all actually have two i don't shops lounges because I'm, I'm going to Shops say something. And, and, yeah. And, and the reason I say that and I laugh about it and, and you know exactly where I'm going is because the name is the Cigar Lounge. So I went up to Plano expecting, um, I went in, beautiful shop, great selection. I mean, big humidor. Phenomenal. It was selection. missing something. It was missing something. And I'm like, okay, where can I smoke? And that's when y'all told me about the city ordinances saying that you couldn't smoke 
inside a planet. Yeah. Is that, yeah. That, yeah, it's uh, because we're not standalone. We can't smoke at the Plano shop. Um, weather, you know, depending upon your tolerance for weather or what the weather is, we do have a uh, outside table, which I refer to as our 24 hour lounge, the only one in the DFW area. So you can always go up there two o'clock. You can go just drive, sit outside the shop and, and smoke a cigar. But uh, you're not the only one who's had that. We've uh, it's been brought up several times, but uh, yeah, uh, no, no. You know, no I had to give you a hard time. <laughs> no, I we have customers come in because there's an apart uh, not an apartment. There's a hotel nearby, so people look us up and they'll come by and they'll be like, you know, where's the lounge? It's like, ah. Oh. I, I I wish there was something we could add to it to mm -hmm. differentiate a little bit to let people know, hey, we we don't actually have a lounge here, but you know that is the corporate name, and so that that was the decision. Well, High above my pay grade. That that would make that would make sense on why you know there's there's not many cigar shops cigar lounges that's actually in Plano proper. They're in Frisco, mm -hmm. they're in McKinney, they're in Richardson, they're in Little Elm. They're in all mm -hmm. of the little, the, the towns that surround Plano, but not actually inside Plano. Exactly. And, you know, we got lucky in McKinney because when McKinney made the change to their smoking ordinance, however long ago that was, they, grand, uh, they grandfathered in or they still allowed you to be like in a strip center or to have neighbors and, and be able to smoke. But Plano said no dice on it so yeah if we were standalone we'd be okay but, but y'all uh, do it, have that beautiful like as you said in mckinney it is absolutely we do and it's not far from your plano no shop. it's not it's it's not um virginia and stonebridge um it's really a good area because there's so much traffic that comes in there um as far as just uh people going to subway people going to grab a sandwich or grocery shopping they see us there so we'll get some traffic from that so that's that's nice we're not quite as tucked away as the plano shop but the 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 great thing about the plano shop is it has been there i'm gonna get this 23 maybe 24 years now wow so even though it's kind of tucked in there by itself it's uh it's been there a long time it's actually the first shop i went to when i uh when i moved to dallas or plano cool. rather so yeah, wow. it's been there a while. And and what I love about it is it's the variety. And like, cause I was able to find things that I haven't seen in other shops. And, um, and it, I mean, it was a large selection. So um, that was one thing I got excited. I was like a kid in the, uh, you know, candy store. And I was like, oh, I haven't seen this one. Other shops don't have this. So I was excited to see some smoke sets not necessarily around this area that y'all provide at that shop. Well, that's it. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to head on to the cigar lounge because now I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> Let me call ahead and I'll get you, I'll get you a seat, um, <laughs> get you a discount. Um, the, uh, the, the great thing is um, the folks who, who originally built those shops, um, uh, Bill and Janine Elliott, they, I don't, I'm going to go ahead and say foresight. I don't know if it was foresight, but when they built those shops out, they built them with large humidors, which means you're going to have a lot of space to fill. And uh, as you notice in the Plano Lounge, we actually added a huge middle section to it mm -hmm. because we, uh, we ran out of room. But it's nice because it gives us the opportunity to bring in some of those other brands that you said you don't see elsewhere because we have the space to do it. Um, I try to mirror the humidors as much as possible. Uh, the only time you're going to see differences is probably uh, maybe some sizes will do better in one store than another. Maybe one boutique will do better in one shop than another. Uh, but as far as your major manufacturers, I try to mirror those just as much as possible. Uh, but then, yeah, with some of the stuff you mentioned you saw in Plano, it does better there. We'll have a little bit in McKinney, but um, we've got some really good loyal guys in the Plano shop because they know we'll have that cigar. So they come specifically for that. 
Very nice. So, and that kind of, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Gray Beard. Sorry. I was just going to say so, so my understanding this correctly. So you, you, you purchased the shop from the previous, the, the, I, I did not. Okay. Um, it was originally a uh, Sir Elliot's both. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here trying to light this and talk. It's like a monkey doing a math problem. Um, the uh, Bill and Janine Elliott uh, built the shop. Uh, Plano, I think, started in 99, if I believe correctly, or if I remember correctly. And then uh, McKinney started a little after 2000. And they were both called Sir Elliot's. Uh, the McKinney shop was there before anything else in McKinney. I mean, it had really not built up. They had a lot of, you know, they saw growth coming, but they got there just ahead of the growth. Mm -hmm. And so they decided to sell to one of their employees. He bought it, renamed it the Cigar Lounge. Uh, then he had it a couple of years, I want to say two, three years. Then he sold to a group of customers um, that had the lounge up until just about three years ago. Then another customer, uh, my current uh or the current owner, my current boss, he bought the shops. Okay. And um, the Plano shop was purchased by the the the, the group of, of customers uh, probably ooh, eight nine years ago now. So uh, I've been I've been there uh, for seven years, generally managing things. Um, but yeah, it's it's gone through several hands, but each time it has. We've uh, we've seen growth in it, and each owner, of course, is excited to you know put their stamp, grow it, see what we can do with it, and uh, it's been it's been great for the shop. Um, the shop uh, Red was talking about the McKinney shop. We've done some great improvements there. Um, it was looking pretty dated, and the the current owner was able to uh, uh, really kind of just see that in. We had uh, uh, the indoor outdoor green carpet in that McKinney <laughs> shop that had been there since yeah. it opened. And uh, that does not age well in, uh, in cigar shops. And so uh, finally was able to get rid of that. Now we've done some great updates to it. Uh, much better seating, got separate areas. So um, yeah, it's, a, it, it's great to see the changes that each ownership change has brought to the, uh, brought to the table. And they kept me around, so that's nice too. For some reason, <laughs> just real quick, for some reason, when you said that that uh, indoor outdoor green carpet, all of a sudden seventies disco music started playing in my head. That you would not be wrong, sir. You would not be wrong. <laughs> it was. Uh, it, uh, I'll tell you this: we 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 do still have it in Plano, and it mm. it'll take a beating. It, that stuff will hold up. You get your money's worth. Yeah. What you lose on aesthetics, you make up in durability. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, it is definitely when you walk in. And, and the funny thing is, is there's several other cigar lounges that have been around the Metroplex that have that same green carpet. So I'm wondering if they all got together and said, hey, let's get this and let's divide it up between these 10 lounges because some of them still have it like in the humidor sections but they don't have it in the lounge section or in the one section and I just kind of laugh because I'm like that's the cigar lounge green carpet you know that's there. somebody cut a deal there's a shop yep. in uh, Overland Park Kansas called cigar and tobacco they have that same carpet <laughs> so I don't know if I, I don't know if it was like a cigar lounge starter kit that people could purchase that it was like here, you know, here's some, here's four walls and some green carpet. The wooden wall, the wooden panel wall. <laughs> oh, yes. Maybe, yeah. maybe, but, maybe it's some kind of rite of passage. It could be. It's like, you know what, let's see, let's see how, how long you make it and what you can do. And you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a, a bad idea that they had because you know, when you're, when people are talking about opening shops, there's so many expenses that go into it mm -hmm. and you have to decide, okay, where do you invest that money up front? What do you want to really spend your money on? That's going to make the biggest, biggest difference. 
uh, you want to you want to have a good looking shop, but you got to ask yourself, OK, you know, how much do you have to spend on chairs? You know, what do I do? I go heavy on chairs and spend a lot on chairs right away or do I wait and just gradually improve those? So it makes sense that they might start out and say, you know, let's see where this goes. And, you know, if, if it sticks, then we'll we'll improve some things. Yeah. So one one thing that you did bring up is like, and I wanted to kind of talk about because I know for some people they go into cigar lounges and they get upset because they're expecting to find a certain cigar and then they don't understand why you don't carry it or you'll only carry it for a little while and then it just kind of disappears. So I kind of wanted to talk about that. And then okay. also, um, it's kind of a two-part question here is I know that sometimes that other people don't see is like whenever you choose to carry a brand, they may have certain requirements. So if you could kind of expound on that, because I know that some, it's, I didn't know that for the longest time until, you know, I started having friends who had lounges in this industry. And then when I found out that there were certain requirements, I was like, holy cow, there's a lot more to managing a cigar lounge than what the customer, every day, my customer might you know, realize. You are now light years ahead in your end uh, and taking one more step towards having your own lounge because you've just, you've just nailed the, uh, the important part. Yeah. It's not, it's not everything that the, the customer sees. And, and so many times when customers will ask, they're like, well, what? I mean, you sit and you smoke cigars, right? You sell them like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. Um, they don't see that back end stuff. And like you said, there's a lot of things that go into it that, uh, that they don't understand. And, and sometimes with cigars, when we don't have them, it could simply be because uh, we're out and mm -hmm. you, you run out because, um, you know, maybe the order was late. Maybe you didn't get the order in on time. I mean, yeah, that mm -hmm. happens. Sometimes you don't get the order in on time and it went faster than it did. That'll happen. A lot of times you have mm -hmm. something that's selling, regularly and you kind of have a pattern to it you have a rhythm and you know okay every so often i'm gonna to have to order this many boxes um and just this week in plano for example we we ran out of a cigar and it was because somebody found it they liked it it became their favorite and they bought our last two boxes well that was that that threw my ordering cycle off because it was like i i didn't need these but now I do because somebody's going to start mm -hmm. buying them by the box. So mm -hmm. that, that will happen. Um, and it's, that's not a bad problem to have at all. <laughs> no, um, other class problems. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, other times it can be that it's something that we've carried and a couple of guys liked it, but it just didn't move like we wanted it to. Uh, it just didn't get the traction. And so you have to look at, okay, this space, it's taking up this space. I need this space to make me money. Can I bring in another cigar to, that will move better, that the customers will gravitate to more? Doesn't mean it was a bad cigar. Doesn't mean that, you know, we made a mistake by carrying it. It just means that the customers, you know, tried it and maybe moved on to something else. And you run into that a lot with boutique cigars with your, with your uh, uh, big manufacturers, people are always gonna want those. They want Oliva, they want Fuente, they want Padron. You never have to worry about, you know, are, are, are we going to have too much of this? People will buy those, but when you find these newer brands, sometimes people gravitate to them and it's the flavor of the month. Um, you know, like the same with a lot of craft beers. Boy, it does well for, for mm -hmm. a while. And then people are like, well, what's the next new thing? And then that kind of gets lost. So you have to judge, okay, does this come back? Does this stay? Does it have, does it have the, the staying power that we need? So sometimes that happens. Um, and, you know, sometimes, again, it can be just one guy going, well, I really like that cigar. I'm like, well, that's great, but you buy one cigar every six weeks. I can't really justify putting one box in here for you to come in and be the only guy to buy one every six weeks. I got, mm -hmm. you know, I have to think of it. 
Now, conversely, if you want to buy the box at a time, well, we can get you a box and sell it okay. to you, but I'm not going to, I can't, we can't function in somebody's humidor. Right. In that case. That you state that because when I was in, when I was in retail and I was in marketing in retail, every shelf space had a value mm -hmm. that was associated to it. And you had, you know, that with that value, you had an investment on it and you had to see your ROI within that particular shelf space. Yes. And even on the end caps and, and, and the, the display. So I can see what you're saying on that when, especially mm -hmm. boutiques to where you've got to understand that that boutique and, and Red and I, we have our leaf and grain, we have our own cigar as well. And mm -hmm. it picks up shelf space at, at the underground. And so I, I get it. If it's not selling, then that's loss of revenue for that state. My, my, yes. my question is, what are, as a, as a manager, as a retailer in, in this, in, with the humidor, uh, how do you approach mitigating that or handling that while you're mm -hmm. still trying to bring boutiques in and offer a variety outside of your your top four your top five you know it's there are so many boutiques out there i think you could probably fill a humidor size with just the boutiques that we know of and that we probably haven't heard of um sometimes david what it means is you're going to keep that line but maybe instead of five blends you're gonna you're gonna maybe cut that back to two blends that move because you want to keep that uh that that manufacturer in the shop because that particular blend uh from them does well um but it's also trying to figure out is there do i have something to replace it is something going do i have something right now that i can put in its place that will do better because if if you don't, then just having that empty shelf space isn't doing you any good either. So sometimes it's it's waiting to see, okay, what else do we have that we can bring in? And a lot of times that can just be a line extension. Um, you know, may, maybe add a different size uh, from one of our existing manufacturers or a new blend that they come out with. But it really is, um, it's a game of Tetris. It's, it's just that constant moving. And mm -hmm. I think part of it too, is realizing what boutiques to put in. And, and again, all of cigar smoking is subjective. Every review, mm -hmm. everything that anybody says, it's their opinion. And, and that's why I never say, Hey, this is the best cigar of this year. I call them my favorites because you may mm -hmm. hate it or you may have found something else but these are my personal favorites because my palate like them. So mm -hmm. what I try to do in the humidor is find something that maybe isn't my palate because I know not everything is going to be, but that the burn, the construction, the draw, the flavor is such that it's like somebody's going to like it. It may not become my new favorite, but I believe it's a quality cigar that I'm not ashamed to hand to somebody and say, hey, try this. It may not be something I'm going to smoke, but I have confidence in that. Uh, the one thing I, I don't do is if I don't have confidence in the cigar and just feel like it's a questionable cigar, then I won't bring it in because I don't want to hand that to a customer because I feel mm -hmm. like it's, it's, you work so much on reputation and, and being a, a I, I use the term cigar tender, it's like being a sommelier, you know, you, you build this trust and you want them to come to you and say, hey, that last cigar you got me was good. You know somebody's palate. What else should I try? Well, if you pull out something that you know is lousy, but, you know, you just want to sell it and you give it to that person, they lose all confidence in you. So mm -hmm. I, I, I make a point of trying not to do that. I'm sure I've, I've you know, missed on a couple, obviously. I'm, you know, but I try to make sure that it's something that's going to be a quality cigar that people 
people can go out and, and, and get some enjoyment out of regardless of, of where they are on the taste spectrum. Uh, but there are, trust me, people have come in with, you know, my uncle's, literally, my uncle has a farm, cigars. That wasn't the name, but that was the sales pitch. And would you like to bring these in? Like, you know what? Just leave me the little Ziploc bag and we'll never call you again. But I mean, so there are a lot out there that you could just flood your shop with that, uh, that you know, have no business in the shop. I don't know if I answered your question or not, David. No, no, you, you answered it perfectly. And, and really, this is really, uh, we have a follow-up question from, from Albert on our on facebook that said he asked what are your top five brands that you sell the the most of uh right now i mean i could give you the manufacturers i couldn't probably tell you the exact blend in those manufacturers uh rojas would be one of them uh then we would have oliva definitely padron is going to be right up there uh i would say drew estate is going to be in there with their deadwood line uh, that is really taken off for us. And um, Fuente, I'd say Fuente and Rocky, depending, depending on which cigar it is, Fuente and Rocky are going to be, uh, be right up there. Uh, but, you know, coming, coming in in that top 10, you're going to have foundation with the Charter Oak. Uh, that, that does well for us. And you're also going to have... Um, Oh man, I just spaced it. Aganorsa. Aganorsa. We're getting some people to come really hard on Aganorsa. And the great thing about them is because Aganorsa is doing so much with so many people, if somebody Ooh. likes a certain warp cigar, you can always say, hey, have you tried the Aganorsa? Or vice versa. If you like Aganorsa, have you tried this? Um, because you always want to expand that palate of the customer. And we still, we still get those guys who come in. They're like, I want my box of cigars. I smoke this one thing. I smoke it by the box. I want that. And that's all I'm ever going to smoke. And then it's like, okay, you know, that's, that's all they smoke. We're, we're not even going to try to move you on something, but the majority of customers now, they kind of want to, you know, they want to shop around like, like with whiskeys, you know, it used to be just, you know, Hey, let you, there you go. You know, Bottle of Jack Daniels, it was fine. That's all you drink. You just need a bottle of Jack Daniels. You got your whiskey covered. But now there's so many options and a lot of people, they want to try those out. And it, it's the same with cigars as well. And so and we were talking about like, I know that um, one way that y'all kind of move cigars and other ones is with cutting lights. So mm -hmm. that y'all have or events that y'all have. So um, if you could kind of go into a little bit and tell us or, and tell our viewers like the importance of actually attending those. Because some people are like, I don't know what to expect. You know, what do I do? And they're kind of hesitant to go to them because they're not really sure what to expect. Sure. That's serendipitous that you bring that up. You know, we just so happen to have a crowned heads event this Saturday. Who knew? Um, that's yeah. It's I, it is, yeah. and it's one of my favorites. There Brian you go. McGee. He, you gotta to love him. You gotta love. Gotta love Brian McGee. He uh, he is probably the most abused rep in the business. I gotta say that he oh, takes hands, more hands crap. Down, hands down. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of brutal, but he takes it all with aplomb and, and he's a good sport about it. But uh, Brian's fantastic. I met him for the first time at my old shop and uh, he did a, t a member's tasting uh, and uh, showed us a, a trick using how to change out the wrapper from the cigar you're smoking to a completely different cigar, how it changes. I've always remembered that. And, and so his cigar knowledge is is fantastic the the thing i i think customers get nervous about uh cutting lights and events when it's a different shop if it's their shop it's like these are the guys i know i can go i can hang out with them you know and and it's it's their group but going to a different shop i think people kind of get a little nervous about that so one thing to keep in mind though is there's going to be other people there like that who don't uh who haven't been to that shop before 
but also you're there to get deals on cigars. So who, who cares what anybody else thinks? You're there to get some deals on cigars for yourself. So, uh, so it's worth it to go uh, for that reason alone. Cause sometimes you can get, you can get some cool deals, but it, that's probably a thing where, yeah, guys just, you know, where am I going to sit? Who am I going to talk to? So, uh, you know, sometimes guys will come in groups. We'll get parties come, you know, two, three people so they can sit and the great thing with that is with some of the deals that they get, there's a cigar for everybody. You know, they can mm-hmm. all get one and everybody in the group can try one. But um, yeah, people do tend to get a little little nervous. So like, should I go to that shop? But uh, I encourage them to come out. We've got, we've got a good group of guys. And, and I can honestly say that they are a welcoming group. Um, so I don't think anybody would have to worry about feeling like they were... Uh, they were out of place. I have been to shops like that where it's kind of like, why is this guy here? But yeah. uh, for, for the most part, any shop I go to in town, uh, people have always been friendly and I wouldn't hesitate to go to uh, an event at another shop just because I, I did not know that individual provided, of course, you know, I wanted to go and, and stock up on those particular cigars. Fortunately, I, in this position, I don't really have to drive to get deals. So that's kind of a perk, but yeah. um, and it was funny because I went and it was my first time to your shop and the, and, and the guys were welcoming, you know, and, and of course you were very welcoming, but it was a Rojas event. And I was like, man, I love Rojas. I'm going to get in on this deal. And I ended up winning like, I want to say over 15, that's right, 20 you did. cigars. Yeah. yeah you made like, a haul. I did. I like cleaned all out. What was I during this event? Because we're supposed to go do these events together, Red. Well, I didn't even what? know. It was a surprise. Like I went, I went out to do a shop stop at the Plano, and I did a shop stop, um, and I recorded y'all uh, humidor. So if y'all look on my Instagram, there is a shop stop of the cigar lounge in Plano, and it, it shows a variety of their cigars. And then while I was there, they're like, well, we're having a Rojas event over in McKinney that's not too far. And I'm like, and they said, and Noel's going to be there. And I'm like, well, I have to go and see Noel and give him a hard time. So I went over there and um, loaded up. It was, it was nice. I was supposed to go to the the two other shops. I was supposed to go to two other sh- stop shops, but uh, y'all kind of took my whole entire evening. See, because we're that friendly. <laughs> We, we are, yeah. we are absolutely that nice. We, uh, we try it, you know, it's an interesting shop because having, having worked at another shop and been in a lot of shops, um, these guys, they are more, I hate to use the word family because people always make that seem like, you know, all oh, their families, like, well, you don't know what people's families are like. So, um, it may not be a compliment, but they are, uh, they are people who they are closer, I would say, than in most shops. It is mm-hmm. it is not the hey, these are guys I see in the shop on a daily basis or when I come into the shop, these are my shop friends. These guys maintain friendships well outside the shop to the mm-hmm. point of going to graduations, weddings, uh, barbecues, doing many things together just well outside of the shop atmosphere. And that, I think that's kind of unique to us. And it's always been that way. But something about the culture there at that shop uh, uh, fostered that, we, and we uh, it's it's kind of nice to see. We we, we definitely understand that because you know, as you probably know, underground is red in my yes. You know, stop and, and underground underground carries that that same type of atmosphere as well. Uh, I I, I kind of want to follow up on something that you had mentioned you know, taking a step back where you had mentioned the, the sommelier, you know, mm-hmm. and how you really know your cigars before you, you know, that the particular cigar before you're going to recommend it because you've got to recommend right. it. And, and I am a, I am a cigar sommelier and Red is, uh, is finishing up her as well, which is, you know, essentially the sommelier as well. So we, we both get that. How important is it, or can you talk a little bit about that mindset that you have to have and what it takes 
for you as a retailer to be able to get into that mindset to to understand and how many cigars you have to smoke to really understand that to be able to relay that information over to your customers because the sad part is is honestly is that's that's more of a rarity than it is the norm it is it, it absolutely is and and I'm trying to think of how to put it. it is it is incredibly important I, I will say that they if you don't know what that cigar smokes like how it tastes you cannot recommend it to somebody you can't just look at it and guess and assume this this is what that person wants one of the most important things to ask people i think is what do you normally smoke mm -hmm. because that's going to give me a base of you know where's your wheelhouse because if i know that and they're like you know i smoke um you know whatever maduros well then you don't even bring up connecticut's um so you've got to have that as a starting point and then you've got to be able to know, okay, I've smoked this. This would fit in that basic profile this person gave me. They smoke X. This is going to be in that same amount of body, um, but it's going to have a different flavor. But they still like that amount of body with it. Or they smoke something that's going to have a sweeter wrapper, maybe a Sumatra. Okay, so maybe you could get them to try a Corojo at that point. Mm -hmm. um, finding finding something that's gonna that's going to not totally just be the opposite of their palate so if you don't smoke that cigar you really have no point of reference for that so that is incredibly important the the knowledge that you're talking about with the the leaf and the aging and and i love studying that stuff kind of the the the, the digging down deep the nerdy stuff about mm -hmm. cigars I love learning that. And, and two people I've talked to, uh, um, Justo Aroa and uh, uh, oh, Jose Blanco, learned so much information from them. Things that I've been able to use when talking to customers in the humidor. But the thing is, it's practical uh, knowledge because when a customer comes in, they just want to know, will I like this? You know, will I like this? And so you need to understand, okay, it's it's medium body. It's got a sweeter leaf, good construct. Okay, you know, it's going to get a little spicy on them. Maybe they don't like the white pepper won't work for them. I'm going to have to go with something else. That's important to know. But sometimes, and I have seen it happen, a customer will ask, will I like this? And 10 minutes later, the, the cigar tender still talking about the factory and the type of leaf that's in it. And the customer at this point is like, I, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. What do you, uh, yeah. I don't know. What's a Pallone? I, I you know, I just want to know if I'm going to enjoy this after my burger. You're sitting here telling me how, how long it was aged, and <laughs> what they did to it. I, this means nothing. So it's good mm -hmm. to have that information, but, you can't always throw all that at the customer because it's just going to, it doesn't answer their, their question. Um, you know, it just depends on their amount of knowledge and what they want to know about the cigar. I've often found that what you know about the cigar, Hey, it's a medium body. It's going to take you this long to smoke. It's going to have a little bit drier, uh, drier uh, feel on the palate to it. Uh, you're going to get, a little bit of uh, earthiness to it that makes sense to them they can process that and that's the stuff they want to know that's going to help the buying decision um so it, it is important david you've got to know those cigars and if, and if the guys in the shops aren't smoking them they can't answer those questions and the rest of it that's fun stuff to know because then that makes us better at our job but mm -hmm. sometimes throwing that at the customer it's just, it just, it, it, they don't, they don't know what to do. The humidor is intimidating enough because we've mm -hmm. had so many people come and go, you've got so many cigars. I, I don't even know where to start. And then if you start throwing all this other stuff at them, they're like, I, I don't know. I should have, you know, they, they, they can't process it. You got to kind of narrow that down for them. It's like going to the cookie aisle. It can be, it can be difficult. <laughs> I love that going to cookie aisle. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs>
I, I, I do have. I use problem. cookies for a lot of analogies. <laughs> they just work out well. Well, and, it, and it's good in this industry. And I do have a follow-up, but I don't want to hog this particular line. So, Red, go ahead. No, no. Oh, no. I'll, go, I'll go with your... I'm going to say this, and then you can go with your follow-up. Because I was actually... When I went back to y'all's lounge, um, I actually... You had a guest come in, and they were used to smoking a particular cigar, and they asked you, hey, I don't see this cigar, what would you recommend? And you said, hey, what do you normally smoke? What ring gauge do you like? Because most of us know what kind of ring gauge we like. And you directed them into one. And I actually kind of interrupted and said, hey, this would be another good option too. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it's important to know because you want to introduce them to something that's good that they're going to enjoy. I don't think any of us on here would say, hey, smoke this cigar, knowing that they've never smoked anything like it and they're taking a huge chance or they don't like the, you know, as you said, the white pepper or, you know, they don't like, like the floral sweetness of cigars. So you don't want them to um, waste their money and have a horrible experience because we've talked about when you go to smoke a cigar, you want it to be enjoyable. You want to explore your palate so you're getting a little bit of that, but you don't want it to go far left or far right to where exactly. they hate it. They yeah. hate it. And, and that's it the, ruins it. That's the importance of knowing the cigar, but also understanding retail. Because there, I'll just tell you of an incident that I know of that happened. I was told about. Somebody came in, hey, man, I've never smoked a cigar before. I'm graduating from something or celebrating something or the other. I've never smoked before. What should I get? And I was like, oh, you know what I did? I, I sold him like this expensive, you know, it was like a $20, you know, expense. I'll, I'll just say it doesn't freaking matter. He sold him a Liga. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that was, I'm like, he's never smoked before. No. He's like, no, but, you know, hey, mm -hmm. he bought the Liga. I'm like, mm, no. he's never coming back. He's yeah. like, yeah, but I got like 20 bucks. I'm like, yeah, we could have made 500 off this guy if he would have become a smoker because that's not, that's not something I would ever start somebody off on. Like, oh, you'd like to try to get into smoking? Here, let's get this powerhouse on you because no. it is, it's going to knock him on his butt and it's not mm -hmm. going to be enjoyable. It's better. And he's going to be fit. Start, yeah. Start <laughs> him on a nice, flavorful Connecticut, um, something that they'll enjoy. And then after that, they said, I go, you know, I had such a good time smoking that cigar. Wonder what other cigars there are. I'll go back to mm -hmm. that same shop and ask them again for another mm -hmm. recommendation. And so right. it's all about building that clientele. It's not just you, you want a guy who's in and out. You want somebody who, who will become a client. Mm -hmm. and, and you can build that with. So that's that's something important that that we try to do. I, I, I think both, both your statement and, and Red's, Red's line actually builds up my follow-up even better. Yay! <laughs> nice. A, a couple, couple of key things on it. And here, Leaf and Grain, we, we take, we take the, the education, the teaching, the pairings, um, as as a friend of ours has described it, which just fits so perfectly to the next level. So so we'll we'll talk about the leaves. We'll talk about the seeds and and the terroir and and the region of, of where they're grown from. And so my question is going to be around: at, at what point in time do you do you educate your your tenders? Is what you say. Um, you you encourage them you tell them okay I, I need you to learn the next level on these to know that that just because it's a maduro leaf that's just a color and that that actually has nothing to do with the strength with of the body of the cigar exactly so connecticut doesn't mean it's going to be a light you know a a light bold you know and that's a term that we're trying to get out more is Stop talking about cigars embodied in strength. Start talking. Yes. 
fucking moment. I, I completely yeah. concur with that because so many people come in and go, I want a full bodied cigar. I want something full bodied. And I will always ask them, do you want full body? So you get the shakes and it kicks you in the head. Or do you want something full flavor that you can taste? I'm like, oh, I don't want something like that. I just want to taste it. I'm like, okay, you want full flavor. You don't yeah. want full body. They're two completely mm-hmm. different things. If you want full yeah. body, we can See, do that. And there's people who like that. But uh, yeah. They, he agrees with that. He agrees difference. with that. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. It's, Sorry. it's a huge difference <laughs> because, you know, you can sit there and give somebody a full body cigar and they'll be like, what the hell was that? It's like, you said full mm-hmm. body. And it's like, no, that's not what I meant. So it's understanding that, hey, maybe because we know the term doesn't mean the customer understands the term or is using the right term in the right way. Mm-hmm. So that's something we have to understand. And honestly, Dave, to your to your question, it's a matter of just telling them, you got to get in there and smoke. You know, you've got to try these things, especially the new stuff that comes out, because this is the stuff that people are going to be asking about. It's you've got to do that. There's magazines in the shop. Read those. Um, get your information from there. I'm not going to make you give me a breakdown of the region of Nicaragua this came from in the soil compound. But I want you to be able to talk knowledgeable to a customer and be like, hey, yeah, you know, it's kind of a it's a lighter cigar. I don't know that you'd like this because when I smoked it, it was like they need to have that. So it's it's a matter of while you're here, since you're going to be smoking. Smoke something you haven't tried. This is not. This is not the time in, in, in the shop to be smoking your favorites. You need to be expanding it so that right. you tried everything in the humidor so that you can speak. Uh, speak with some knowledge on it or as your as your tobacconist you know educate your your tobacconist need to be educated to the point that if someone walks in and says you know i don't know what kind of cigar it was that i was smoking i I can't tell you anything about it but i but i know that i I was getting like like a creamy coffee type note yes it It was very very creamy it was very smooth it it was you know, it reminded me of my morning coffee with my with my breakfast, and for us right. to immediately be able to say, okay, that that's either going to be a a Jalapa, a Jalapa Valley uh, Habano wrapper, or that could be a a, a Mexican San Andreas wrapper. I know it's not mm-hmm. going to be an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, and I know that's not going to be a a Criollo out of Esteli in in Nicaragua. And so be able to immediately recommend a cigar based upon just what they stated of yes. what they got out of it. it. It that makes such a big difference because a lot of times they don't know what they smoked. Is like, you know mm-hmm. I had oh, we, I had the wrapper on me and you know oh, it fell out of my wallet. Um, so a tip kids take a picture of uh, of the uh, of the wrapper with your phone. Everybody's got a phone you can take a picture with now. So take a picture of the wrapper and just save it on your phone when you go into the shop. It's much easier. Um, But yeah, we've got to be able to do that. And again, that's going to come from the knowledge of them going through and studying those cigars and smoking them. And also, you know, maybe being able to recommend something. uh, Maybe it's not the same cigar that guy wanted, but it's going to be within that profile because... Mm-hmm. they've had it and tried it with a cup of coffee or they've paired it with their whiskey, their, their bourbon, their beer. So they're able to make knowledgeable uh, um, recommendations. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, you're absolutely that, right. It's, it's very critical. And I think that's like really important because I've been into some cigar shops and they're new workers they haven't really been around the cigar industry and they're making recommendations you know and they're good recommendations because of okay this person smoked this they like this but then they pair it with something and that is where you know where like leaf and grain that's what that's our passion is a lot of time is people think it's a bad cigar but it's because of what they paired it with or what they're eating it with or, you know, sure. something along those lines. And it just may not be the bad cigar, but if they're saying, okay, I'm going to bring in, you know, um, smoked wagon is the first thing that came to my mind. Um, 
but to me, I think anything goes with the smoke wagon. So that's not a good one. So let's go with a harder one. Let's go with red wine because we mm -hmm. know that that's a little bit more difficult to pair with, or they're going to do a, you know, a citrus IPA. IPAs can be a little bit scary for some people to pair sure. with. And mm -hmm. in the end, they need to realize like, okay, they're used to the cigar, but it's not going to be an enjoyable experience if they're going to drink, uh, you know, an IPA with it. So because it's going to mute, kind of, it's going to mute the flavor. Correct. So and, I think that that happens a lot because some people don't realize that and take it to that extra step. But no, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. And that's, you know, I can't, can't tell my guy i can't make it a requirement to make them go drink i think right. uh i think they probably <laughs> they probably taste enough on their own but it's it's right. good to, it's good that they they have that but again to be mm -hmm. able to understand what are the facets right. of this cigar maybe i haven't tried this whiskey maybe i haven't tried this particular red wine but this is going to mute what they're getting out of this cigar the mm -hmm. the the leaf in the cigar is just going to be completely overwhelmed by what they're drinking and I, you know, I can tell you, and one thing I've told customers go, I, I'm, they're like, I want to pair it with something. I want to have it after me. Like, what are you having? And, you know, they'll tell me and, and you can go based off of that. I will say mm -hmm. one thing and, and you guys may dispute me on this and maybe you can educate me on this. Nothing. There is not one cigar that goes well after dairy. You got to brush your teeth. You got to rinse your mouth because dairy kills everything. I, Even I, ketchup. I, 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 I got I got you. I've I've done some I've done some pairing. And and that is yeah. a hard pairing because mm -hmm. because that dairy can cause because of the, the amount of sweetness mm -hmm. that, that's in it and the mm -hmm. amount of acidity that's in the cigar, it can cause it to go bitter. Mm -hmm. it can. Mm -hmm. So smoking it with a really high acidic cigar, which okay. is, which is typically a, a younger cigar. Because you know, as, mm -hmm. as our age is, those acidity levels are going to come it's down. Good. Oh yeah. But so, a but dairy cheese milk shake. I've done it with a shake. Those pair actually really good with like a Mexican San Andreas. Uh, okay. Yeah. It, Very good with the shake. Really favorite. good with. Pairs really good with a Honduras Sumatra. Uh, mm -hmm. Pairs really good with a, a Nicaraguan Habano. And, and a lot of Nicaraguan Habanos okay. come, come from a Jalapa, Jalapa Valley, where because of its lower, uh, lower elevations and much more, uh, um, you know, much, much different types of soil, the, the word that mm -hmm. I was looking for just escaped me you get a lot more of the creaminess. So that creaminess naturally okay. goes to trying to take, like what we would do with wines, you know, with wines, when we have a really high acidic wine, like a, a, a white, like a, a Chardonnay or a Chianti or um, a Sauvignon Blanc, you know, something that's really high in acidity, we want to pair mm -hmm. that with something that's going to be sweet. To right. Back to that. Okay. We necessarily want to do that when it comes to dairy because of how the dairy interacts with it, if that makes sense. Right. It does. Right. Uh, Cause I've always, I've always found dairy it because it coats the tongue so much mm -hmm. and yeah. tends to just stay on the palate that it kind of mutes and just changes the flavor. Well, right. I love so that, 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 Albert, that was Albert always the difficulty says, I found with it. Yeah. Albert, Albert says it clogs your pores too. And, and it's absolutely right. It's true. When and the, and it's not good on the sinuses either. No. When I'm pairing with dairy, I always go from the cigar to the drink. I don't go drink to cigar. Okay. So, that makes sense. And then, well, and then here's another thing is like a lot of um, conversation has been about, you know, the prices of cigars going up. Yes. And taxes and things like that. So um, here, here is my thing is when you're managing it, and I know tax, each state is different for their taxes and each state requires a different thing. So I know like Texas, you have to do your state tax differently than your federal tax. And then you have to calculate all of that mm -hmm. stuff behind it. So um, 
a lot of people are, they don't really get that. So can you kind of a little bit explain like the taxes in the cigar industry? Because, and especially at shops, it's, because it, it's crazy. Most of the times you see that increase, it's coming from the manufacturer and, and people want to, the first thing is it's like, well, you know, you guys are raising prices. It's like, well, you know, I'm sure it's your business when the cost of, of supplies went up, you didn't take the hit on that. You had to raise the prices because mm -hmm. the cost of making those goods went up. And the one thing, and I think you guys, you guys understand this because of the way you talk about the, the, the tobacco. One thing that's lost on a lot of customers, it's an agricultural product. There's mm -hmm. not some factory with a machine that can just knock out pieces and widgets, you know, and then just turn the knob and now you've got more widgets to meet the demand. It's, it's an agricultural product. When it freezes in Florida, you see things in the news like, hey, guess what? Your orange juice is going up. Hey, they just yeah. had a problem in Mexico. Guess what? Avocados are going through the roof and there's not going to be that many. And people are like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, avocados. Yeah, mm -hmm. they can't get as many. They're more expensive. You tell them, hey, you know what? There was a, uh, they, there was a, a low uh, crop on broadleaf, so it's hard to get broadleaf. Well, why the hell can't you get them? Well, again, because the manufacturers <laughs> don't have the leaf to do it. And mm -hmm. they're going to have to wait. Now, they could go back to the, the cigar boom model and be like, hey, as soon as it's rolled, it's yours. And mm -hmm. they're not going to like that cigar because no, it's not going to be the same cigar because it, it has to age properly. And you want that same leaf. And are there times when other leaves are substituted? Yeah, probably, because there's a lot of cigars that have been around that you're like, hey, this isn't the same exact cigar that I used to smoke. And it's because maybe, okay, that leaf wasn't available. So, you know, we're going to kind of fudge it a little bit with this one. But customers notice that. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally would rather know that when I'm going to purchase a box of cigars that I like, yeah, maybe I had to wait for it, but that's because they did their due diligence with it. They waited and gave me the cigar when it was ready. They didn't, they didn't just rush it out to me. So I'm getting this, this young cigar that, uh, that hasn't even had a chance to, to get all its flavors together. So that's one thing I think that, that customers have to keep in mind. But mm -hmm. also the prices that these guys are experiencing, you know, as far as, especially during COVID, having to keep employees, you know, the price of shipping has gone up astronomically. And I've heard that from several manufacturers. They're like, mm -hmm. hey, it used to cost this to be able to get a, a, a container mm -hmm. across. Now it's this. Well, mm -hmm. what, are they, what are they going to do with that? Um, you know, they can't just eat that because they've got to be able to stay in business. So it, it's one of those things that passes on. And, you know, another thing it, that I think is, is maybe lost on the customer, just trying to understand, again, agricultural product that has to age. If I, as a manufacturer, go out and I find a good crop of tobacco and I buy that crop, say, stupid number, I bought it for $10,000. Okay, well, I just bought that. Now... I can't just turn around, make cigars and sell them next week to you and make my $10,000 back. Mm -hmm. I now have to wait five years, three years to age this tobacco before I can recuperate my cost. So I've got $10,000 in tobacco that's just sitting out there that I'm not making any money back on until it's ready to sell. So what does the manufacturer do at that point? They're, they're basically waiting. They're putting this money out there waiting for the day when this will be ready and well, that's and that's you, yeah you're either gonna you're either gonna spend ten thousand dollars on a young on a young crop of tobacco and let that sit in your in your aging room let that sit in mm -hmm. your pilons, which which the pilons are are the big stacks that the tobacco mm -hmm. is fermenting or you're going to spend more on tobacco that's already been aged but then you're also taking a risk of it not mm -hmm. being that 
that fermentation level uh, mm -hmm. for what it is that you're wanting for the blend. And, and to use an analogy on, on bourbon, there, mm -hmm. there is no rule unless you are stating that your bourbon is bottled and bond or unless you're saying that it's stating that it's a state that it has to be aged any particular mm -hmm. But those of us who drink bourbon, how many of us are going to drink a bourbon that's only been sitting in the barrel for 30 days? I'm not. Right. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, one like that. I'm going to, I, you know, and so your whiskey manufacturers, they're either going to spend a lot of money on sourcing some juice that has the age statement that they're looking for, that has a mm -hmm. profile that they're looking for, and bringing it in and bottling it and selling that for $90 a bottle. Or they're going to let it sit, let it age, and that's costing them money because now it's taking up space, and they're not getting exactly, and they're not getting a, a revenue stream on it just yet. And you know, one thing, and I, I just learned this within the last few years uh, about what angel an angel share was. I had no idea that you know, you, you lose part of your alcohol yeah. as it's aging. I was like, mm -hmm. wait, what? So I start out with this much, but then by the time it's done, I have this much. It's like, so you're actually losing product. That would be like saying, Hey, I rolled Churchill mm -hmm. cigars, but by the time they're aged properly, they're Toros, you know, <laughs> yeah. like exactly. you're, 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 you're losing something. Exactly. There. And so that's something I, you know, I never thought about, but I thought that's wild mm -hmm. that, you know, they've actually got to figure that, that into it. With, mm -hmm. when they're doing it right um, and, and that's why we always say there's science behind the cigars there's science behind the bourbon there's science behind the the beers coffees i mean it's it's things that we don't really think about because we're just enjoying it and we want it and sure we're in a society that we want things immediately because we're used to getting that yes. instant gratification and with what we're enjoying with cigars and you know, the whiskeys and the craft beers and the coffees is sometimes if you want the best and you want it to be better, more flavorful, then you're going to have to wait. And I think that sometimes as a consumer, we either don't know or we forget that because we're just like, I really want this cigar. Why don't you have it? You know, and we get impatient for it. But then when we smoke it, what later we're like oh it was so worth it you know well and you know it's kind of it goes to the same with food you know it's the convenience aspect yep you know you can go someplace and they're gonna yeah they're gonna bring you your steak and shrimp platter you know in 10 minutes and you know you're in and you're out is that going to be as good as at a restaurant where you have to go wait for them to make your steak you have an appetizer no it's not going to be the same experience it's not going to be the same quality so you understand that going in like hey if i'm sitting in my car listening to the radio and waiting to to tell this magic box what i want for dinner that's not going to taste as good as something where you actually got out of your car had to go sit down and have a waiter uh mm -hmm. take care of you it's a longer process but it's not going to be as good, but it's, you expedite it, but, you, but you under, they understand that there's not going to be that quality. And I think sometimes, again, lost on cigars because it's like, yeah, same thing. We're waiting for it to be good. And that's why you saw so many manufacturers go out of business during the yeah. cigar boom, because it was just like, hey, just hell, get it out there, get it out there. They're going to smoke mm -hmm. it, get it out there. I remember one, it was called Mi Cubana. have no clue who made it, nothing about it. But I really remember enjoying the flavor on it. But I could never get one that could have a draw. And I mean, you know, that, that brand's gone now. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, maybe that's something that could have stuck around. But you look at the people who did it right, Padron, Fuente. Yeah, they're still around. But these were cigars during the boom where people are like, where are they? Why can't I get these? Well, mm -hmm. because yeah. they're going to, they know how to do it right. And they're not just in it to make a buck. You know, they're looking mm -hmm. at the long term. Uh, you know, do we want to be in business for a year or do we want to be in business for 50 years and, and have a name that represents something so that when people hear that name, they know it's quality. Um, but we, we but even, yeah, we, we, you know, talk, talking about, about the big brands and yes, 
you know, that they have because they've been doing this for as long as they have. They they have more capital behind them. They have you know more. They have the brand behind them to be able to have the longevity through something like like COVID. But you the state about how you know we've seen some that will have a particular blend that made their name known, and then mm -hmm. because of shortages, because of you know natural, because this is this is a this is a. Uh, you know, it is, it is a farm that, that grows it. Uh, that's, that's why cigars are considered a food item, mm -hmm. considered in, in the food category. But there's a particular brand out there that they have a reputation for changing the blend by substituting particular wrappers or particular fillers or particular binders. And, and one of my, my favorite, and I'm, I'm I'm, I'm going to say the, the name of the cigar without saying the name of the manufacturer, but it's, you know, my, one of my favorite cigars from back mm -hmm. in, you know, 2012, 20, up to 2016 was the decade. And after 2016, the decade just did not have the same profile of what it was. And it was because they had to change that. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't, don't realize that, but over a period of time, that does come back to, hit even them sure their reputation it does because people uh, i've had uh, there's one and i won't name them just because you know it's something we sell and it's and it does very well but i've had many people say this isn't the same cigar what changed like yeah. well i've got guesses but i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm not gonna tell the <laughs> customer but it's like there's a lot of things that can go into it Maybe mm -hmm. it's your, your, you know, your corporate CEO going, hey, we got to sell more of these, push them out. Mm -hmm. yeah. That can happen, but customers will notice, hey, this burns a little wonky. It never used to yeah. do that. Or, mm -hmm. you know, it just doesn't taste the same. Why is that? Yeah. And you know that it's like, yeah, okay, this isn't exactly the same cigar that it was. But because it has that name, people aren't going to make that change. Right. And I get that manufacturers would be hesitant to say, hey, it's the brand new or it's the tweaked or the 2.0, because they've got that name recognition that that's built into it. That's really helping right. sell the cigar. But, yeah, it's it's disappointing to customers when they're like, OK, this isn't this isn't what I thought it was. And, and or, no, or this isn't what I remember it to be. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the key point there. It's not what I remember mm -hmm. because the decade is still a really good cigar. Mm -hmm. It's not what it was. And and mm -hmm. one of the things we, we've we've kind of touched on a little bit about it, but because because this is a product that grows and because mm -hmm. there's so much through through fermentation, there's so much, you know, on, on soil quality, what has happened to the mm -hmm. soil you know, the environment. We, we saw earlier this year where uh, Carlito Fuente and their farms in Dominican Republic got hit by hailstorms and damaged yeah. much product. And so we mm -hmm. Because of all of those that come into play, sometimes they have to, because at the end of the day, it's still a business. They mm -hmm. yes. put out product. So maybe it's a case to where it's not sitting in their aging room for three years mm -hmm. like we would enjoy, but it's sitting in their aging room for six months. Yeah. And so therefore that is going to change the, the, the palate. It is going to change the taste on it because it is a younger tobacco. It hasn't gone mm -hmm. through the first that, through that process. Phase. It hasn't gone through the process. Mm -hmm. And so this kind of circles us back around and this also is something that, that Les has kind of brought up with, with us in the industry, Red and myself and, and Leaf and Grain, you know, with, with media and news and-, and Oh, and, can y'all hear him? Can you hear me? Hear who? Yeah, I can hear him. Okay. You're kind of frozen, Red. There you go, you're back. Okay. I was like, what happened? And it looks like I'm frozen. So- we have to educate our, our, our employees to, to know, to be able to recommend, okay, yes, this is, a, this is a good cigar, 
but I recommend you letting it sit in your humidor for another three months yes. before you before you smoke it. I let I recommend you okay, dry box this for a couple of days and then put it in your humidor and smoke it mm-hmm. smoke it in a couple of weeks and be able to recognize that based upon when you get the cigar in and just yeah, it would be great if we could, if we didn't have to put stuff on the shelf. You know, if we could if yeah. we could sit and just hold it and and be like, hey, we let it sit another month for you, but unfortunately, we we can't. Um, yeah. But there there are that is that is the case, and there are you know there are people that we will that we will talk to, and even customers who know that's like, hey, this is one you got to age. Uh, you know, their regular their regular releases that come out, and it's like, you know what, this is better if you give it some time and there's some that, yeah. that I smoke like that where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and buy this, but I know that I'm going to let this sit for a Put year it side. because it's yeah. going to be, it's going to be that much better. Whatever changes take place. Conversely, then there's those that smoke phenomenal straight out of the box. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, one of those for me was the, uh, the Aladino uh, Habano Rothschild. I was with friends when I smoked that. And I will tell you this, we were so excited to try it. UPS had just dropped it off and we tore into it and, and opened it up and smoked one. And I, re- I remember looking at my buddy and going, damn, this is good. Because, it, and it, again, it just, it hadn't even had a chance, but it just, wow, the flavor on that, it was like, it was good out of the box and it's only mm-hmm. going to get better, you know, once it gets some humidification to it. But that, there are those cigars. Um, I remember, you know, the, the street taco when when Noel was coming out with that, and uh, he gave some. Uh, we were I was with some other reps at the time, and even you know, there's just that look around the room where everybody's <laughs> looking at each other, like, "Are you? Are you like, damn, dude? Like, you're all just kind of acknowledging, yeah, this is going to be a yeah, war. yep, because you, yeah. because you know." Uh, what you got and then you know then there's some that you just look at the band and you're like ah oh, man um <laughs> there are those that, that that we do have come in but um mm-hmm. yeah you do you do have to to be able to not be afraid to tell the customer that right and let them understand but i, I then you're also dealing with that type of customers are like hey i got a wedding this weekend it's like well i'm going to steer you far away from that then because i'm going to give you something that you guys can smoke at the wedding uh, I'm not going to give you some and be like, well, let it sit for a month. It's like, no, you need to smoke right. this weekend. Yeah. Right. We're going to get you some that'll smoke this weekend. And, and that, and that's what I want to say to like our viewers. If you be honest and open, we've, we've talked about when you're in the lounge, be honest and open with the tobacconist and the people that are in the lounge and let them know, because that's what they're here for. They're, you know, like they're going to steer you clear. Like he said, of something that's going to need to wait for a while. So um, we always say, ask those questions. Um, don't be scared to ask them. And because uh, you, w- they want you to enjoy that weekend, that experience, that celebration Absolutely. or whatever you're doing. And they want you to come back, kind of like what we were saying earlier. So one thing that I do have, it's kind of like off topic, but okay. uh, I'm going to ask, is do's and don'ts of a cigar lounge when you're going in <laughs> because there's sometimes you know graybeard and i have had experiences where we go into the lounge and we're like is this really happening and you know what's and that might be like what's one of the wildest things you've seen how do you handle that but like basic basic rules because some people don't really know those basic rules um, a couple of stories came to mind. Neither, none, neither of my current job. Um, the big one, and this is the one, and I've talked to people and they're like, man, I got kicked off the message board. Guys wanted to fight me. The biggest one, if you go to a shop to smoke, support the shop and buy cigars there. That is the biggest one. Yes. And guys will say, you know, well, how many sticks should I take to a shop when I go? zero Mm -hmm. you don't need to we've got sticks and that's the thing that the guys have got to understand you don't take coffee to starbucks you don't take food to a restaurant 
You don't bring cigars to a cigar shop. I have no issue with, this is my favorite cigar. I want to smoke this. Fine. Come to my shop and smoke your cigar. All I'm asking is that you go into my humidor and at least buy one. If you're going to sit and smoke yours, enjoy it, but buy one from me because all of this costs money, the electricity, the, you know, the coffee you're drinking, the soda, the lights, we've got to pay, you know, you're, you're paying for all of this stuff and guys will say, well, I can get it cheaper online. Well, smoke online. It's, they've got to understand that it's a business. And again, I have no problem with guys wanting to bring in that special smoke. Maybe it's something we don't have or whatnot, or they're all going to smoke the same thing, but you've got to support that shop because otherwise that shop's not going to be there. And Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, guys are really good about understanding that Mm -hmm. they will come in. They'll be like, yeah, you know what? I get it, man. Cool. I'll go buy something from you. And and it's appreciated. There are people who want to fight you and argue about it the whole time. And, you know, you have to be like, look, uh, you know, either go buy something or, or leave because I have customers who can take up these Mm -hmm. seats. And that did happen in a previous shop. An entire fraternity came in to watch the NFL draft and three guys smoke cigars and they wanted to take up the entire lounge and not smoke cigars. I will tell you this, every one of them bought a cigar. It was a long (laughs) night, Uh, but they they all ended up buying cigars. So that's probably the biggest one. I think one thing to keep in mind, and again, mileage varies, every shop's different, but my main thing is, is that I tell people, look, this is a, this is a cigar shop you can drink in this is not a bar you can smoke in act like you're in a cigar shop this isn't a bar don't you're not on bar behavior you're on cigar shop behavior and you can have drinks but let's let's keep that cigar decorum and not the hey we're at the pub decorum because there's a lot of people here who just Mm -hmm. you know they want to sit and have a conversation you know with their with their buddy they want to read Mm -hmm. they don't need just the you know people going crazy. So I, I that's love, another, that's another thing I say. Yeah. I, I love the way that, the way that you stated that. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think part of the problem is because we've had some really big cigar shops that are really more sports bars that have mm-hmm. kind of built that mentality. Sure. Mm-hmm. My, my, I mean, I know Peretta myself, there's only one shop that we bring our own cigars into and 99 percent of the cigars that we bring into bring into that shop we purchase from the shop and that's mm-hmm. that's okay that's another thing i, I should mm-hmm. say look if you if you bought it at our shop and you're coming back into our shop with it that's you know that's completely legit and 100 percent uh kosher it's it's you know when they're bringing it in from another shop or from cuba um that uh <laughs> we 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 might say something that's another thing don't bring your cuban cigars and put them in your locker no matter what shop you're at don't do that because whether it's legitimately cuban or fake cuban whatever they're not treated and if those things get beetles you can ruin everything in somebody's locker you can ruin you can get them to go through the shop just don't do uh, it you know yeah. keep those at home yes um, yes that, that's a good one because it's like i've i've known shops that have actually had to throw away majority of their inventory and then it ruined everybody's in the locker mm-hmm. cigars like and you're sitting there thinking well it's going to be okay because it's in my locker uh, no, it's not going to be okay. You know, I can probably tell this story now because it's so far in the past. It's it's seven years now. We used to have a, a, a third store, a Dallas store um, over on Frankfurt and Preston. And uh, we ended up selling that shortly after. But we actually had Beatles in that shop and they started in somebody's locker. Now, we, you know, we didn't make an announcement to the entire shop like, hey, mm-hmm. by the way. Um, we, we tried to keep it as low key as possible because mm-hmm. the last thing you want is that information to get out. But right. uh, mm-hmm. we had to we had to track down the source of it, get rid mm-hmm. of those cigars, find anything in the humidor that had them, 
And then we had to figure out how do we treat the humidor? We, yeah. you know, this is, you know, I mean, we were talking about stuff like, I don't know, do we rent a giant freezer truck, move all the inventory into a freezer truck for 48 hours and then pull it back out? And we actually found an exterminator. He is a guy Ooh. local. I've kept wow. his number just in case some shop ever had that issue. But he came in and he swore to me. He's like, doesn't change a thing. Doesn't affect the taste of it. You know, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I really hope so because this is my butt. But he came in. He put these little pellets down on paper plates, left them in the humidor for 24 hours, uh, came in, took them out. It smelled like microwave Mexican food in there for a little bit, but the cigars were fine. It, it killed oh, wow. the beetles and the cigars. It didn't change the cigars at all. And uh, wow. So wow. I was like, OK, so if this ever happens again, I'm going to know who to call. But uh, yeah, don't don't bring in hinky cigars. That, so that's just had, bad. We, we had a comment that that's hilarious. So, so Joe, Joe uh, Golino. Uh, he, he says, would that be considered uh, the Beatles share? Kind of like the angel share? The yeah, share. there you go. It's, <laughs> it's yes, the Beatles share. I, you know, and I don't even know if that's covered by insurance. I got to look into that. Um, you know, how, how, how that's handled. Um, we've had a couple of uh, humidifier leaks. That was fun. Um, where we lost some product. Um, mm -hmm. not that that has anything to do with the customers, uh, but you were asking right. stuff not to do. Don't put your face in the fireplace to try to light your cigar. That's just a, that's a good tip. Um, that, uh, and the fact that you yeah. said that means that it's happened. Yeah, it, it was stopped prior. Um, you know, you yell, at like, oh, I'm sorry. It's like, man, I just see you tipping head first. Also don't <laughs> spit in a cigar shop. Oh Lord! Um, really? Yeah, we had we. There was a customer, and he would come in. He he was one of those guys who liked to come in like the hour before you closed, and then spend two <laughs> hours smoking. So you really had to be like, "Come on, dude," you know. Um, but he would come in, read, not bug anybody, and I was like, "Did he just spit?" And he would get water because he would smoke, but he doesn't. He wants to rinse his mouth, so he would get water, gargle it and then spit the water out. And huh. he was spitting it into the fire, the gas fireplace. And I was like, no, 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 no. We don't do that here. And so he's like, well, what if I put it in a cup? Like, I don't care, but you're not spitting it into the fireplace. And then one night he left the cup and he spilled it and left it to clean up and he was never allowed back in again. That, that brings <laughs> up another good, another good one. Mm -hmm. it, if you're going to use the glassware mm -hmm. at the cigar shop, unless the employees tell you, don't worry, I've got it, clean up after yourself, wash your mm -hmm. own dishes. Your mama doesn't yeah. work there. You, you didn't hire a maid that worked there. Clean up yeah. after yourself, please. It's, it's, it's always nice. We, and we appreciate when the cu customers, you know, I don't expect you to grab the vacuum and do all of that, but man, mm -hmm. if you really drop a ton of ash, you know, don't be afraid to sweep it into the thing. It makes it easier on those guys because yeah. you know it. It's it usually falls on the night shift, and they mm -hmm. you know they want to be able to get home. But yeah, like you said, David, unless they say you know, just don't leave the glasses laying around. You know, just at, at the least, just go put them by the dishwasher. You mm -hmm. know, so that we don't have to go around collecting them yeah um right. that's that's always that's always a nice thing um this one yeah, I would say, saying, you know oh go ahead no i just please you know oh. just just thank you we've we've had a, we've had customers i i haven't but some of my guys have told me we've had customers who just wave their lighter and be like hey it's empty <laughs> they, they they want to refill on it and you know of course we're, we'll gladly refill it and then they just take the lighter back it's like come on man you know mm -hmm. these these guys you know we don't mind doing it but you know be nice to these guys they're not indentured servants right well and the thing is is like I, it used to be like treat it like your home 
But then some people take it to that extent where they move into a lounge. So you can't really say that treat it like treat it like your home because then they get too comfortable. And I'm kind of scared to see what their home looks like because see you. I'm glad you mentioned that because I have quit saying that. I have told mm-hmm. people you treat this like it's my home and you're a guest in my home who is always mm-hmm. welcome. But do not treat it like your home because you may be a slob. And the first time I had that conversation, somebody put their muddy boots up in a chair and said, oh, I thought I was supposed to treat it like it was my home. I said, okay, first of all, I don't think you're putting muddy boots in your chair at home. Second of all, it is not your home. It is the owner's home and you are his guest who is always Mm -hmm. welcome and we're happy to have you, but treat it like you are his guest. And, and that's the thing, because like you said, you'd be afraid to look at some of these guys. Like, do you really do this at home? Do you get away with this? You treat your own stuff like this? I, you know, so there, there is that. Um, because, yeah, you, you, most of the guys, and most of the guys are really good, but you do have those guys who, you know, it's like, why do I have, you know, chicken wings in my, in my ashtray? There should not be chicken wings in an ashtray. Was this the only option? Um, it's just one of those little things that guys run into at the end of the night. That's a headache. So, uh, but for the most part in, in our shop, if guys stay late, they're willing to be like, Hey, you know what? Let me help you bust some ashtrays. Mm-hmm. You know, you stuck around yeah. for us. We're happy to help you out. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that means a lot to the guy who's working. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it, it encourages them to be like, Hey, you know what? Yeah. I'll stick around for another 30 minutes. So the game's over. Because mm-hmm. I know you guys aren't just going to just trash the place and leave it to me. A, a couple of other ones that we're getting in the comments. Um, don't and I can't it. see the comments, and I'm sad. <laughs> well, it's because I have I have Facebook open here next to me, <laughs> next to next to our Zoom. <laughs> but, uh, He's multitasking. It. He's two screens. I actually well, and got- I do too. I, I'm looking at up. YouTube as well, but I don't think we have viewers on the YouTube one. But that's okay. Uh, don't, don't lick your don't lick your cigar and then and then use the house cutter or anybody else's cutter. That, uh, that's yes, standard. Yes, oh my gosh, it's so gross, especially that, with COVID. That is, that's probably a, a, yeah. And, and yeah, that's probably that's probably number one right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, even above, don't bring your own cigars. Don't lick the damn cigar. And and then use our cutter. We don't. Nobody wants yeah. your spit. Or or anybody else's cutter. Yeah. Other than your own. If you want to, if you want to lick, if you want to lick your cigar, then then pull out pull your own cutter out of your pocket. And Here's the thing. It, yeah. Any cutter you you know, but <clears throat> if you've been smoking long enough, buy a cutter. You know, I tell mm-hmm. people, you know, if they've been smoking six months, I'm like hell. Use the house, you know, use a house cutter. Buy a three dollar cutter. If you've been smoking for a year or more, and this is something that you really enjoy and it's going to stick, it's worth investing in a good cutter. It really is. Mm -hmm. And the house cutter is going to get used a bazillion times, and you're not going to get as good a cut on it. It's there for convenience. But if you want a really good cut and you don't want to catch whatever the guy before you had, invest in a good cutter. So so another one, this one really gets me. And, and less less love. He he works at a shop up in uh, Oklahoma City. He says you cannot smell the cigars through the cellos, so do not try to. And, and seriously, people, I I walked in and I, I'm not going to say the lounge, but but it, it's a local lounge. And I walk in and there's a, there's a guy in there, and he's smelling the cigars both through the cello and just uncelloed. And and he's doing something that 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 Albert says, you know, where he's he's fingering it, you know, what we call a, a finger f. Finger fuck. Yep. And and he's doing that, and then he then he does this number right here. Oh. I'm not touching any cigars because I don't, mm-hmm. now as another consumer who's in the humidor yeah. now watch this. I'm not touching any other cigars that's in there. Because I don't know what he got, oh, right? Bold, what have you? You know, just just don't do it. Do if you right. want to do it, purchase it. Then, then yeah, then, then well, and you know, and it, 
if it is cello, don't feel like you need to tear it open, break the barcode, and then stick it up your nose. Because we will have customers who will who will open them and they hold it right. It's not like they get it under the nose. No. It's like, touching no, it's the like nose. this. Yeah. It's like this. And it's I like, dude, do this I don't this is my cigar. It's like, dude, right. you're not gonna get much from that unless you're tasting it and smelling it at the same time. You know, you're you're gonna be able to appreciate the smell, I guess. But don't don't be doing that because now you got your cooties on it and you know. <laughs> It looks like crap because now it's harder to mm -hmm. sell because it's, you know, you got something that like clearly somebody's broken into the cello, but stuff mm -hmm. like Padrones that aren't in cellophane. Don't be yeah. doing that. Here's another thing. And this is, this is a, a, just something I do. When you touch cigars in a shop and I tell the employees this, when you ring somebody up, when you touch something that is not celloed, touch it by the foot because or the, 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 the top the cap is going in somebody's mouth. So yes. when you're ringing it up, when you're looking at it in a shop, touch the foot. We're going to set that on fire. Don't put your hands around the top of it where somebody's going to have to put it in their mouth. You know, mm -hmm. that's, I'm sure we cut it, but at the same time, you know, just touch it at the bottom where it's not going to, where it's not going to make a difference. It, and I will tell you, my daughter is 14. She's been grabbing my cigars. Like whenever it, 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 that sounds like really bad. So let me go back and say this before I get like lots of hate comments and things like this. Okay, my children uh, on special occasions, like for example, uh, national, national, national preemie day. Um, that is a very special day for me. And Lydia knows that on that day, she knows the date of national preemie day because she's a preemie. She gets to go to mommy's humidors and pick out a special cigar. She goes to the deep age. She even knows which tupidors to go to. But it is so neat that when she goes to the cigar, she either has it by the foot or she knows to touch the band right here, touch the band. So she's been doing this since she's like 10 or so, you know, be, before then. So if my 10 year old daughter, who's now 14, knows to do this, Come on, guys, y'all should, and women, people, y'all should know where to touch the cigar because she's figured it out. And when I say go pick out a cigar, it's so cute because she always touches the band and she hands it to me by the band because she knows she's not supposed to touch. And it, her hands are oily, so it's going to get on the leaf. It's going to change it. Right. So she's very respectful of that. Dave, you mentioned a uh, uh, guy smelling through the cello. Um, that's, that's always kind of been, I, I love that that came from another shop guy because that's something we see. I've never said anything to anybody. I want to, but I'm like, I don't want to make this guy feel like he's, you know, like a dunce in the humidor, but you look at him and it's like, dude, what the hell? And it's like, do you do that with Twinkies? Um, it, it's one of those things you just kind of watch and, and it's like, okay, well, if you think that worked for you. Um, but I've never called anybody on it and been like, sir, sir, that's, that's not going to work. Um, I did have a guy light a cigar with the cedar still on it. And I didn't know this until I came by later. I was like, Hey man, how's that cigar? He goes, I'm having trouble with the burn. And he's, I, it's got the cedar on it. I'm like, well, crap. Okay. He's with his buddies. I don't want to be like, Hey man, well, you did it wrong. And I also don't want to let him keep doing it. So I was just like, really, let me look at that real quick. And I <laughs> took it from him and I just pulled the, the, the cedar off real quick. I'm like, try it now. And he just had this appreciative look like, oh, okay. Yeah, thanks for not calling me out on that. But um, yeah, you always got to take the cedar off. Next time you guys, either one of you talk to Brian McGee, I'm not going to try and tell his story because I don't tell it well. He has a fantastic story about somebody smelling through the wrapper at an event. It is a fantastic story. So next time you talk to him, ask him about it because uh, it is another story. The, the yes, that is uh, that is one of my favorites. <clears throat> Pardon me. I, I was at, I was at an event a couple of weeks ago, and uh, this guy was oh Espinosa. The guy yeah. was, the guy smoked through the band so, oh, so wow. 
he did not take the band off, but he was actually smoking the band. It was with the rapper. And, and I, I asked him, I said, so how's your cigar tasting right now? And he's like, man, it, it, it's getting really bitter right now. And, and it was so good, but now it's just really bitter. And I'm just thinking, and I can tell you why, but I don't want to embarrass you in front of everybody here. You know, you see, know there's see, a there's Y'all are a nice because I would have been care. like, well, you know, know if, it's a, if it's if it's a buddy of mine, that's one thing. But also as a retailer, it's kind of like, eh, you know, I don't want to. But, you know, they make us there is a cigar out there where they say you can smoke through the band. Mm -hmm. And I have done that. And it was absolutely horrible. It's like, OK, maybe maybe I can. But by no means should I, because it, it smelled horrible. Well, oh, yeah. and that oh, yeah. to another part is take off the like if you have a, a ribbon around the foot, yes. yes, make sure you take that off because I have seen people. And, and here's my thing is I'm going to be guilty in my attention everywhere else. You know, if my kids come down and they're talking to me and I cut and I light and I'm like, holy crap, I'm about to light the band. So, I mean, I've gotten distracted before. But make sure you um, take off the, the the ribbon the on ribbon. the foot too. The footband, yeah. There's all sort. Yeah. There's all sorts of little things and little etiquettes. And I know when I started smoking, uh, which man, let's see, that would have been. Hold on, I'm trying to do math here. Sorry, I'm not. Uh, good so that. we're going to be here for it, a while. It would have been 26 years. It would have been 26 okay. years ago this uh, Labor Day weekend that I started Ooh. smoking. Very nice. um, so so you're you're right up there with with Brad and myself. There you go. Yeah, twenty six, right to ninety six, towards the end of the, uh, uh, just kind of towards the end of the boom. But um, man, I had a point. And I lost it because I started doing math. That's the way my brain works. Um, I I I got one for you. And, and okay. I'll hear your guys' thoughts on this. We've all seen the cigar chewers. Yeah. When somebody is chewing the cap of the cigar and it gets all blown out and then they take it and they put it down on the ashtray where all of their spit, fluid, saliva, everything, saliva, everything is coming, is transferring over to that ashtray and then they pick it up and, and continue and on, continue chewing it. I'm like, do you have some antibacterial wipes that you can just take and wipe that off? That that's yeah, I, that turns my stomach. It is kind of gross when there's when they're setting it on the ashtray. I don't. Some people, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's that they're just leaving the cigar in their mouth or they just feel the need to chew while it's in there. Some people do it, but yeah, it is gross when it gets when it gets set on the ashtray. And and actually, that's. What I was, what reminded me of, of how long ago when I started smoking, um, there was a, a bit of a ramp up time, and I bought an idiot's guide to to cigars because I I needed that. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the things it talked about in there was, you know, chewing the end, and you know, should you chew the end? But one thing it talked about, it had these rules of etiquette, and I mm -hmm. thought about, you know, these are so arbitrary because there was this thing of like. You only smoke to the band, never past that. And it's like, well, what if it has a giant band? You know, I only smoke up to that. But there was also this school of thought of, well, when you sit in a cigar shop and you smoke, you remove the band so that if you are smoking an anniversary Padron, the gentleman who's smoking the $5 yeah. bundle stick does not feel like, oh, he's superior to me. But then mm -hmm. there's other schools of thought that are like, no, leave the bands on. That way when a guy goes, hey, what are you smoking? You can show him the band. There's, there's those funny arbitrary rules mm -hmm. yeah. That, yeah. Uh, that come into play. But, you know, I, I've seen that in some shops, David. You were talking about rules. Some of them, they have, you know, keep your opinions to yourself. Yes. yes because right. there, are, there are people who will be like, what are you smoking? Well, that's a piece of crap. Well, you know what? Who, who the hell asked you? You know, yeah. I enjoy this cigar. It doesn't matter. You know, yeah. do you, you think you're smoking? Is, oh, that's, 
a cute that's that's not a cuban i only smoke yeah cuban. yeah well, congratulations you're 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 smoking most likely a fake and you're missing mm -hmm. out I heard a guy loudly announce in a shop, he said, why don't I smoke cigars that are less than 15 bucks? Because I don't smoke shit. And my first thought was, fantastic. Let me take you to the humidor and I'll show you our cigars, $15 and more. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll load you up on those. I thought, you know, that's an idiotic statement. And I know you yeah. don't smoke cigars. You are not a regular smoker. Exactly. Because if you were, you would know there are a ton of cigars that are less than 15 bucks that are fantastic. And and this, and I'm going to say this because uh, when I went to the couple times that I've been to your shop, your guys are really good about coming around, cleaning out the ashtrays and stuff. And they were really nice because whenever I go and Greybeard has, can testify to this, I always have my little cigar holder that I put on to the ashtray. And the reason I do that is because I don't know who's a chewer and who has put their cigar and all that stuff right so i i i placed mine on top of my cigars but your guys were really good and they just like gently moved it emptied out the ashtray and then put it put it back so um that's one thing that i'm very big about and i mean i did this before uh covid started so i mean and it was just kind of like my thing was like i don't know who's chewed i don't know what's been there so that's just kind of my thing that i do um with that and most lounges when they come around they're very uh -huh. good about moving it gently to the side especially if there's cigars on there uh -huh. and then they'll empty it and then they'll put it back so um that's one thing is like now that we have mentioned that and people have like i've never thought of that um there you have it there's your solution yeah you can that. you can mm -hmm. they make those they sell all sorts of little mm -hmm. you know just cigar rest and cigar stand that you can use uh hey you know if you're, you are using the house cutter and it's one of those with the little guillotine that you pull down you hold your cigar on it just watch where you put your fingers that's just a uh that's just a good tip yep. based on a couple of people that i know and a couple of cutters we had to throw away um so, yeah, there it is there you go well you can't even see it like the background but i have yeah. one yeah that's the exact yeah. one yeah had a couple of people they weren't watching it was like well and that hurt I could imagine. Oh, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. But I mean, you know, I can just imagine. How. There's only been a couple of times because, you know, if I'm using a like a, a butterfly cut, there's only been a mm -hmm. couple of times I've caught my finger and pinched it. Not in the blade, but just in the side. And it's like, mm -hmm. eh, I got to pay more attention to that. And I'm, I'm too old to be doing this. That's a rookie move. I've, I've done that with my uh, Calibra V cut. Yes. that and, and that right there, I will say, is probably one of the our best selling accessory cutter mm -hmm. right there that is fantastic that mm -hmm. that right there was a game changer because people yeah. who liked doing that v cut was like oh well, you know it was great but man when you got that it changed the game and the thing that i think it really especially for me opened up was smoking torpedoes torpedoes were always such a pain because it's like okay i got to cut enough to where I can get a draw, but I also don't want to turn it into a Toro. You get a DV mm -hmm. cut, it's like, man, I've still got a torpedo, but I get all that draw out of it. So it mm -hmm. really just kind of expanded into being able to smoke those uh, and enjoy those more. That That's a fantastic cut. I know there's a lot of other deep Vs out there, but that mm -hmm. that by far is, uh, is a game changer, I think. That was... Uh, one of the best accessories to ever come out. Well, we're coming up. We're coming up on two hours, and being wow. that, that this is this is the twisted pair. How? Yeah. How long does this thing normally go? That you, I I, oh, I thought you guys did an hour, or until oh, you guys oh, get bored with with no, each other. No, we, we we go we go usually. I usually tell all our guests we go a minimum of two hours, but but we've had some guests on that we've gone four plus hours on. Damn. Uh, uh, on Instagram and and the way that's one of the things that I think that you know I'm going to pat ourselves go ahead and pat yourself on the back red uh you know with with our shows is that we keep people we keep people engaged throughout the entire conversation and and I'm looking at you know the conversations and and the Facebook you know and I was kind of nervous going from Instagram over to a different platform and I mean people are staying engaged but it but shows I, you guys have a good following. And I think part of that is because you guys, um, 
you stay on topic with with this with with the subject matter you're talking about the pairings you're talking about the cigars which is what people want to hear about and you're not trying to do you know mini stand-up comedy uh like some people do yeah uh, not to say that it's not fun because it is a fun show but you know Thank people you. like that they can tune in and they know they're going to learn something from it and that they're going to be engaged so i i think that's a credit to the both of you thank you i appreciate that thank you appreciate that so so let's bring it back to the pairings because i'm really curious red i know you've moved on to another cigar the espinosa but i'm really curious as to what kind of notes you were getting out of his cigar and how your pairing was going okay and now that my airpods dying um it was and i'm gonna say i took a chance on it because when we were talking when you have the Habano and the Maduro next to each other, you can tell the difference. But when they are separated, it is, it's, uh, it's difficult to tell. Because I even had to ask him, I'm like, is this the Habano or is this one? So um, I really wanted to pair it with the Maduro because um, I think it would have gone really well with both of them. But the, um, so I want to say my stout was a little bit too much peanut buttery for it. But towards the end, and, and this kind of brings me to the thing when you were talking about, do you put, uh, back then, when you read the etiquette books, because I've read them before, it said smoke to the band, don't smoke past it. And it was kind of uh, funny because Karen Berger and I were talking, and our favorite part of the cigar is at the end, when you're, you're past the band and you're at the very end, because you get that full flavor punch. It's mm -hmm. just kind of, uh -huh. it seems that's where it all comes together it's the bow that wraps everything up together from that cigar and you can taste more and um i actually because i've smoked this cigar several times and um i actually got like a floral note on the retro mm -hmm. hell that i've never experienced with it and it was really really enjoyable and um and so that was like one thing that I hadn't noticed about it. And it was towards the end because it picked up that flavor from it. So um, I would have probably done it with the one that the Maduro that y'all have. Uh, it would have been a lot better um, with it. But um, when I looked at it in my humidor, I was thinking, okay, this is the Maduro. And that's why I didn't go with the Connecticut because I know that y'all's Connecticut that y'all, the particular Connecticut that y'all have is not like a porcelain where it's in my face with that peppery. So I right. knew it wasn't going to work with that. Um, so that's why I went with the Habano. But I think for, it was a little bit too much at the beginning, but at the end, that final third where that flavor picks up, um, it paired really, really well. And it was nice on the retro hell um, with the drink and the cigar. Um, and then I got a kind of, um, which was interesting, a little bit of a graham cracker to it. Mm. You know, and, um, and it kind of reminded me whenever, and, and we talk about whenever you smoke cigars, it takes you to memories and it reminds yes. you of something and it's a beautiful journey. And one thing that uh, I do with my, that I've done with my kids, we'd go camping and I have a travel trailer and we would go and at night we would take, um, you know, those ice cream cones, we would take peanut butter cups, marshmallows, and actually put it on the fire, wrap it in aluminum foil and then eat it. And that was our s'mores in an ice cream cone. Nice. And that's what it remi and that's what it reminded me of. It was, you know, it was a really nice, you know, beautiful memory that um, I enjoy. Now, would I do it again? I would probably pick something a little bit not so heavy, or I probably um, one thing that came to mind. I was sitting there thinking, like, a cream soda would be really, really good with that. Mm. You know, like a you know those old fashioned cream sodas that would have yeah. gone really, really well with that. I can um, see that. And and usually like with other cigars, stronger cigars that I've had, it's done really well because it's got that cream soda, the balance goes. 
Um, so next next time I'll have to pair it with a clean soda because I think that would be really good with that. From what you're stating about the cigar, I'm, I'm kind of wondering how it would go with say like a lighter bodied red, like a like a Pinot Noir or a maybe a, a Malbec or a Merlot to where you're getting more of that black fruit, those red fruits, uh, those types of notes to pull out some of the some of the sweeter and fruitier notes that that it sounds like you were getting in there. And it, I can and, see that working. Yeah, that, I can see that working really well. So, so how did y'all's pairing go? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm you know, it to, was coffee, uh, so it was going to be good. <laughs> it was the 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 thing I love about the dream. You can tell I'm a slow smoker. Um, I I love in in. I always call them deceptively, deceptively strong because as you're smoking it, it's such a smooth cigar. You're not getting a ton of bite from it. But as you start to get to the end, you realize it, it was a stronger cigar. But as you're smoking it, it's not harsh. It's not, uh, it's not dry. It, you get a little bit of pepper and spice at the back of the palate. But that first initial inhale is very smooth, uh, mm -hmm. almost a creamy type of smoke uh, as it sits on the palate. Um, and it's got that sweetness to it, you know, that doesn't mm -hmm. overwhelm. It's just right there. And it's balanced with the other, with the other spice and the other flavor in the cigar. And I'm a huge fan of that. I don't, even when it comes to food, I, I want everything in proportion so that I can taste all of it. And I'm not tasting one thing above the rest. And, uh, uh, all of the stuff that I've had from Picardo has, has done that and has been well balanced. So, I mean, it, it went well with coffee. It goes well with the, with the water, or this, the, even with the, the fizz in there. But um, yeah, it would be one that I think could pair up well with, with a number of things, um, especially if you got a good, I don't know if a rye would go with, it would pair well with somebody's favorite bourbon. I'll say it that way. It, it, um, I, I can tell you firsthand that it, it pairs really good with a rye. Okay. As, yes. as well, it pairs phenomenally with with a rye. Uh, the red dream, wine. Red wine. Mm. The only thing that I paired with the Dreamer that it wasn't a good pairing was just because the drink overpowered it. Because it because it is a it is a medium. I, I would say it's a medium boldness, medium uh, you know medium to just medium plus on the intensity level on that boldness level. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it did not pair good with an Adelaide Scotch. Okay, with, I could see, yeah. And, and I, I did it with a um, with an Ardbeg um, Cory Vagon, which is you know very peaty Scotch, and not smoky, yeah. but that that peatiness, that medicinal kind of overpowered the cigar. So I lost some of that creaminess. Mm -hmm some of that mm -hmm. white pepper that you get out of the dreamer i lost some of some of that uh some of that uh, the cocoa that you get out of that that one mm -hmm. i can see that yeah pete's gonna pete you gotta be careful when it comes to the the super peatiness yeah mm -hmm. my, my what pairing has gone oh, okay. has gone great i mean this is i i've been smoking the the alma Forte. Uh, and and I picked purposely a two hour smoke, and you know I'm coming down here and and I'm not wanting to stop. I'm down here into the final third, you know, just starting to nub on it. And the uh, the Axe and Oak bourbon, it's coming in at, at one sixteen proof on it, so it's you know it's a nice medium proof on it, and it, it's just a beautiful balanced pairing that neither is neither is overpowering, neither is is toning down any notes on it. It's just a very nice complimentary balanced pairing to where everything is standing mm -hmm. up to each other very nicely on it, which is which is enjoyable. It's but, nice when I one say, flavor supports the other. Yeah. Or brings and, out the other. And 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 that is, and that's what we call like the beautiful perfect pairing. And I'm having the Espinosa their Habano, which has a little bit more creaminess and a little bit more spice and um it is going really really well 
with the peanut butter stout. So um, that is, um, they're both complimentary. They're both standing next to each other. And it's actually um, enhanced some flavors in the cigar. This is one that um, I will have with my um, coffee. And normally whenever I'm in the mood to make um, more of a creamier based coffee, um, you know, with that, um, I'll usually have this, the cigar and and that's what you get with that peanut butter stout is like a creaminess to it um and it's going really well together so it, and it's kind of you know it's not to say could i was it the first pairing was it that bad that did y'all see me leave and go get a different drink no it wasn't because i could still taste the notes of the cigar um but this one's very complimentary if that makes sense and, and I, I want to reiterate a point, it's, it's something that, that we do quite often on our shows where we'll, one of us will say something that it gives us the opportunity to reiterate a point that we've made on many other shows. If you have a pairing that's not going good, change the drink. So ju just mm -hmm. so, the, reason, the reason behind that is that you always want to take whatever is the most complex pair that to something as opposed to trying to pair something to what's most complex. That's why we, you know, when, when we have food, we pair our wine to our food, not our food to the wine, because the flavors that you're going to get in the food is going to be much more complex than the wine, even as complex as wines are. It's not, the wine isn't going to change the flavor of the food. The cigar is not going to mm -hmm. change the flavor of the food. So, Cigars are very complex in their flavors, very complex in, in, in just everything that you're going to get out of it. So if you have a pairing that's you're just like what we were talking about earlier with milk, you know, with a, with a dairy product, mm -hmm. if it's not going good, change the drink. Don't change mm -hmm. the cigar, change the drink. Because it's right. easier to, to take it to choose another drink and pair it makes that sense. cigar rather than trying to find another cigar that's going to match that drink well and it's easier to change out drinks and be able to go back than it mm -hmm. is to leave a cigar and then have to go back to that exactly. yeah um mm -hmm. you know you don't want to you don't want to necessarily have to leave that cigar hanging so well, that yeah that makes sense we are we're at 8 30 and we want to be respectful to your time we both no, I appreciate that. I, I gave uh, uh, what we do in the shadows is on. That's all I've really got on the schedule for tonight. So uh, it's on the DVR. So I, my time was your time. I appreciate you guys inviting me. Well, we we can we can continue on and 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 continue enjoying it as long as we still have viewers. And the the only thing I hate about this platform is I can't tell how many people are actually on and viewing. Gotcha. <laughs> You know, where on Instagram we could, but but I do want to because I've had a couple of people that have messaged me through other channels and say, I thought you guys were going to be on Instagram. This is going to be our new platform moving forward. So, unless okay. we specifically say we're going to be on Instagram, then you can assume that we're going to be doing it from here so that that way we can grow our audience even more so and for you know through other channels because not everybody's on instagram not everybody's on facebook but but by doing yeah. it this way we have the ability to to go on to to multiple platforms where you can't do that if you're going from instagram so that's not necessarily for you that's just to let everybody else know that you can assume that we'll be here mm -hmm. streaming to facebook streaming to youtube and soon streaming to twitter and uh linkedin as well unless we specifically say otherwise that we will be on instagram all they need to know is if it's wednesday night at 6 30 you and red are going to be somewhere talking about cigars and pairing it up absolutely, absolutely. then they can go find absolutely yeah. fantastic i will i'm gonna i'm gonna step out i will if you guys want me i don't know how to get out of this i'll be honest with you i don't know what <laughs> button to push to exit that there's there's a i could just do this <laughs> does that work 
I mean, I mean, I can't. <laughs> I can kick you off, but I don't. I don't want to be rude. But but there, would, there's there's a leave and there's an X. So if you, if I you get. Like, I don't see a leave on there, but uh, yeah, if you want to do that again, and thank you again for to the thank two of you so for inviting me. Up. I've enjoyed it, and uh, um, I, I and I can say I learned something as well. So. I awesome. appreciate that, and I'm not going to be afraid of uh, of the dairy stuff anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a try based on on what Dave said. So thank you mm -hmm. again, both of you, very much for for inviting me and letting me uh, talk about the shop some. I appreciate it. We we loved having you. Um, learned a lot from you mm -hmm. with with all of the all of the nuances and that you know the challenges. You know, being a retail shop is something that's that's in red and and our goal. With leaf and grain is to have a is to have a shop of our own at some point in time, but but thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Gladly, thank you again, guys, for having me. I will thank be, you, uh, I will be seeing you both around. I'll see you guys next yes. Wednesday. Yes. Take care, guys. Have Take a good care. night. Right. You too. Bye bye. Everybody will be able to view this, view and listen to the recording of it, but. Uh, we want to thank everybody for having joined us and uh, fantastic guests. We've got some great things coming up is what we've talked about. Any, any closing thoughts, closing comments, Red? Um, it just, I mean, Philip was fun to have. He, he's a great guy. Just kind of, you know, remember what he said about the brick and mortar. When you go in, support the shop because, you know, they're there, we've always talked about it, but um, just really support and don't be scared to ask um, and try new cigars. You know, that's always what we say. And thanks for uh, joining us and we enjoyed having y'all on and have a great evening or day. <laughs> yes, yes. And so and until next week, again, we're gonna be doing a uh, pairing with juice, bring your own juice. Mm -hmm. So step up to the challenge. And until then, explore the pairings. There's something for everyone. Bye. Good night, everybody.